Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here. Today I have the honor of chatting with multi-platinum recording artist, songwriter and producer, senior pastor of the Chosen Vessel Cathedral, uh, the one and only <laughs> Marvin Sapp. <laughs> oh, I am so honored to speak uh, with this man of God. He has incredible things going on. The new film never would have made it, which I absolutely love. Thank oh, you so thank you. much for being thank with you. me again. I really appreciate this. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to share and talk with you once more. Yeah, well, talk to me about the film. How did this come about? What, you know, I mean, your your life is obviously amazing, iconic. Uh, your music is, but how did it, how did this whole movie thing come about? I mean, it was just a conversation and the conversation ended up becoming a reality. Uh, TV One, along with Swirl Films, uh, talked to me about, you know, doing a biopic. And I was like, wow. Uh, initially, I was kind of shying away from it because, you know, even though I understand that I have notoriety, popularity, and celebrity, I'm still very guarded as it pertains to how I live my life. And I kind of enjoy being below the radar, so to speak. Um, you know, even though I've had a very successful career, I am I was good just being, you know, Marvin Sapp, being able to go and come as I please. But, um, you know, when they asked me about this, I thought about it. And specifically in a season where people are experiencing so much loss or have experienced it because of the pandemic, I felt like we needed some inspiration. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, me sharing my life, you know, will inspire people and let them know that no matter how, you know, traumatic things may have been, um, that they're still triumph after it. Yeah, Iman, I think what was so cool about it is it was almost as if I went over to your house and you were telling me your story because you <laughs> actually were narrating the film. Yeah. And, you know, we were able to kind of see you now as we were also seeing some of the things that you went through. I really, really enjoyed that. It was unique. You don't see that a lot. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that... Uh, uh, shout outs. And I got to give a lot of love to, to Russ, who directed the film and who more or less came up with this particular concept uh, about me being in it and narrating it and and sharing. And I mean, I, I thought it was a great idea, uh, but it really made me feel good, too, because, you know, I got to to be a part of every aspect, you know, from co-writing to executive producing and starring mm -hmm. in. So that's that's a whole lot. But but uh I'm grateful and thankful all at the same time. You know, I also love that you included, you know, the the, the part in your childhood where you, you know, you, you we, we all do. I mean, I think, I don't know. I didn't grow right. up like Christian or anything. Um, I converted later. But I think when you're young, you're curious and you kind of do things that they tell you not to do. And I love that you included the fact that you were drinking and smoking weed as a teenager and still serving, you know, like right. having that one foot in, one foot out. Talk to that, the importance of, of wanting to be raw and real like that. Well, I think, you know, people need to see that. Uh, they need to see a certain level of transparency um, because, you know, and immediately when they, you know, see Marvin Sapp, they assume that he came out the womb, you know, carrying a Bible and a mic in his hand. <laughs> yes. And the truth, no, he, he literally lived a, a tumultuous life um, that he really struggled in the area of alcoholism and drugs. Um, and later on in life, it affected him in some way, shape, form, or fashion, I believe. And, uh, you know, that, but still there's a, a redeeming and a healing quality that God can have in your life. Um, I grew up in a, uh, a time where going to church was not optional. You know, we, we, you know, it was like whatever you did on Friday and Saturday, you had to have your butt up dressed, your clothes had to be pressed up. And mama said, get in the car, we going to church. And that's what we did. It was not like, I don't want to go home. I'm going to play on PlayStation. You know, it was before all of that. So, you know, of course, you know, church was a part of, of my core, uh, was a part of something that we had to do. Um, but even though I went to church, you know, I tried to show that church was absolutely not in me. But, um, you know, God has a way of keeping you connected and keeping you close until you come into the knowledge of who you are supposed to be in him. And that's what happened with me. Mm, that's amazing. That speaks right even to the faithfulness of God, how he'll 
he'll just be wooing us the whole time, even when we're kind of acting a fool. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, not kind of acting a fool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed too that your, you know, the relationship with your father, mm -hmm. you guys didn't live in the same home, and, you know, and that alone could really affect somebody and, you know, take them off course. But I, I enjoyed that in the film, you included the conversation with your father where he kind of lets you know, like, hey, I know what you're up to, like, you really should stop, you right. know, and just having that voice of that male figure you know, telling you to do better. Either, and I don't, you know, you didn't really go into detail about how your father lived his own personal life. But despite that, he was that voice for you, which I think, you know, our youth needs today. You know, a lot of our problems is because of the fatherlessness or the lack of that male voice. So it was just awesome to see how your father's voice actually wound up pushing you on to, you know, wanting better. Can you kind of talk to that? Yeah, well, my father was my hero. Uh, in every sense of the word. Um, the reason why I sing today is because my father was an amazing singer when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And he sang in our local church choir in the male chorus. And um, even though my mother and father divorced when I was very, very young, um, my father did something that was amazing. He had a business that was literally a block and a half from our house. That's where the dry cleaners was. So, you know, even though my mom and he didn't get along at all, and I can be honest with you, um, you know, I was able to, to walk a block and a half down the street and go to my father's job and see him as much as I wanted to see him. And, and he was that, that, that voice in my life to tell me, okay, yeah, yeah. I've heard you've been doing some things that are out of order. That's out of line. And even though you're not in my home, I still have an expectation of you. And that expectation of you is, is that you are a sap and you are supposed to be a leader and not a follower. And um, he instilled that in us, not only myself, but in my brothers as well. And, uh, you know, held us accountable in those areas. You know, even though he wasn't there, when he was around, it was always words of affirmation. And if, if we were acting out of line and he knew it, it was words of chastisement as well. Mm -hmm. Talk about being a father now yourself and and kind of continuing that way of parenting and the impact that you know it makes? Well, my kids, you know, when my wife passed away, my children were very young. They were like 11, 13, and 16. Wow. Um, now they're 28, 25, and 23. Mm -hmm. So so they're all young adults at this particular point in time. But I made a decision when their mom passed that my focus was going to be to ensure that I raised you know, three productive young people who uh, would pay, play an intricate part in contributing to the community that they live in. Um, I tried to model a specific behavior in front of them and even behind closed doors that they can absolutely be proud of. And, and I think that I did it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my kids are doing well. My son uh, just got engaged. He works for Amazon Web Services. He's 28 years of age, wow. uh, has an excellent position for Amazon. Um, both of my daughters are in college. My, my middle child, she has working on her master's degree. Wow. And then my youngest is finishing her dual bachelor's degree in psychology and biology. So they're doing exceptionally well. And I believe that a part of the reason why is because they had a father who wasn't absent. I may wow. not have been around a whole lot because mm -hmm. of my travel schedule, but thank God for, you know, FaceTime and Zoom and emails and things of that nature but then at the same token when I was there I was always present yeah. um, so you know I think that's what fathers really need to understand that no matter what happens between you and your wife or your significant other you need to make sure that you remain present in the life of your children because it's absolutely needed and necessary yeah amen I agree completely mm -hmm. I am um, I really love the film. So I didn't know, you know, everyone knows never would have made it. Like hey, you're in the right key too. Look at that. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> everyone knows that, you know, um, but I, I really didn't know the story behind it. So it was so yeah. awesome to just uh, really, you know, learn of your story and just how it came. I found it hilarious that you were like, 
that that ain't no single like you didn't you know yeah, i did yeah. <laughs> I, I was like oh, that is like are you crazy that no was song. amazing but you it's know what yeah. that it's the rawness of, of the emotion of the passion that you had in it it just it identifies with us all yeah. um and i'm so grateful that your wife encouraged you in well that that's that's a good way to say it she encouraged me I, I'll leave. that's a good way <laughs> It was more nagged. She nagged. She she was like it was it was a consistent conversation. Uh, and even up until the day before I recorded the Thirsty CD, I was actually in revival in Los Angeles. And when I got back home, uh, Aaron Lindsay, my producer, was like, hey, man, Lynn was telling me about this song called Never With Me. I was like, I've already told you I'm not doing this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, after uh consistent prodding uh <laughs> we put it on but I'm 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 very very grateful that I did listen to my nagging wife because oh. you know 16 years later this song is still very relevant mm -hmm. and uh now it's a biopic out of it and uh we don't know what else is going to happen because of it, but whatever it is we're open to it because we we just believe that, that this is a god moment and god's in it absolutely and we needed it too you yeah. know yeah. And and to your point earlier, you know, the I think the film, what the film was actually really good at showing was how you get through grief. You don't get over it, but how you get through it with community, with, you know, um, being able to unload the way you did creatively, things like that. Talk to talk to that just to the importance of um, having outlets when you are in despair and grief and to be honest I think in this season everyone's been touched in some way or form and you can kind of be able to identify with that loss or grief in that way well we're dealing with a lot of anxiety you know because of COVID COVID has really right. uh really has birthed anxiety in the life of so many different individuals through death or through sickness or what have you I, one of the things, my wife, uh, she was a licensed psychologist by profession um, and an educator. So uh, it was just a natural progression that once she transitioned from this life to life eternal, that my kids and I, we got into counseling. And that's something, um, sadly, in the urban community yeah. that we struggle with. And um, immediately I got my kids into a licensed clinician um, so that they can have somebody to help them process exactly what they were experiencing. And the same with me. And even today, because both of my daughters are psych majors. My my middle child, she's a psychology major. Wow. And she's uh, in her master's program in psychology and working toward getting her PsyD. My baby girl, you know, she's a psych major, biology major. And all of them are, you know, moving towards the whole piece of being able to um work with individuals in the area of counseling. Um, and that's one of the things that we're missing. That's yeah. one of the things we're missing. So, you know, I, I always recommend whenever I meet individuals who have experienced what I've experienced, the first thing I always ask them is, is have you gone to counseling? Mm -hmm. Because we always talk about praying through, yeah. but we never talk about how we need somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we need ain't always something that we need to pray about. Sometimes we need to have people in our lives that can help us process, yeah. to teach us and give us the tools that are necessary in order for us to be able to navigate through these emotions because there's going to be hills, there's going to be valleys and, and it never goes away. I tell people all the time, the pain never goes away. Um, but what will happen is, is that it comes and it goes and you need to be able to figure out how to manage it when it comes and you need to know how to deal with it when it goes. So, um, I believe that community is absolutely important. Having people around you uh, to help you get through it is is everything. And, and, and that's something that my, my children and I absolutely had. But I also want to make sure that people understand that a part of prayer is to have somebody that you can sit in front of uh, who is clinically trained uh, that can help you get through it as well. Mm. Amen. Yeah, the, the waves of grief, right? We, we definitely need that. I love that. I was thinking, yeah, I, it's almost impossible to get my Latino father to get some, you know, counseling because of just the conditioning of like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Um, but I'm all for it. I'm I'm with you there, 100. <laughs> percent 
Um, so my last question was actually something that you segued into about community, because I also was shocked to to find out that Never Would Have Made It was kind of written as uh, in honor of your earthly father, but it also ties into your heavenly father. Yeah. So can you kind of talk to that and the 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 fact, because it's a fact, right, that we actually can't make it without our heavenly father and without each other? Well, you know, honestly, when 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 the song was, was birthed, and I always say it was birthed because it wasn't like sat down and written, it just <laughs> happened in a spontaneous moment. The Sunday after I buried my dad, it was actually a song about God. And I was just telling God, you know what? You know, the grief that I'm feeling right now, the pain that I'm going through right now, God, I don't even know how I made it to this point. I I, I, I never would have made it. I never could have made it without you. I would have absolutely lost it all. But now I see how you've been there for me. And after this, God, I am going to be strong. I'm going to be wise. I'm going to be better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just happened in that moment after my dad passed. Mm -hmm. And... um it's, it's amazing to me, really. Uh, every day I think about it, it, it is amazing to me that something so simple can have such a massive effect. Mm -hmm. uh, never woulda, never coulda, stronger, wiser, better. Mm -hmm. That's the song. Mm -hmm. That's the entire song. Now, honestly, there are two verses and a bridge <laughs> that I wrote to it that no one will ever hear. Wow. Uh, because my wife said, oh, no, you done messed the song up now. You <laughs> go all off of it. That's what she told me when I gave it to her. And um, But it, it's amazing to me that the song has had the type of staying power that it's had, that so many people have been encouraged. And my hope and prayer is that for everyone who watches this biopic, um, that they will get some encouragement. There's three messages specifically that I want you know people to remember when they watch it, number one, I want them to remember that no matter how far your child may have gone, that God still has his hands on them. Yeah. Um, number two, I want them to remember that just because you have uh, been diagnosed with a particular sickness, yeah. um, it does not mean that God cannot heal. No. Um, and then last but not least, I want them to remember that even if God doesn't answer your prayers the way he, you want him to, that he will give you the strength to endure whatever it is that you have to face. Behind every trial, there is a triumph. And if they remember that, the rest of their days will be the best of their days. Mm, amen. Yeah, we didn't even touch on the miraculous healing that you got from epilepsy yeah. that was yeah, yeah the that movie's was... amazing i, I actually <laughs> really i love the comedy there was some comedy in it it was great it was it, i watched it with my husband and a friend we were all just sitting down i was like i gotta watch this for work and we loved it so thank you yeah. i'm happy that the song continues to live on in yeah. this way and i just know it's going to be a blessing so i appreciate you is there anything else that you'd like to add Nope, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, I got a brand new CD that's out. It's called Substance. They can pick that up. And then last but not least, um, we did an anniversary edition of Never Would Have Made It. Um, and it comes out on Friday, uh, August the 19th. It's called Never Would Have Made It. Uh, the a sound movie soundtrack single. That's what's called, movie soundtrack single. Get it. It's going to be a blessing. Strings, everything. It's amazing. 